Oke, okay. selamat datang teman-teman. Selamat pagi. Kembali lagi di acara FDE 2021. Hari ini kita mulai lebih pagi ya, jam 9 daripada dua hari kemarin yang jam 10 dan juga jam setengah 11. Kita masih tunggu beberapa teman yang mungkin baru mau hadir. Teman-teman juga bisa minta tolong buat diingetin teman-temannya yang belum hadir, para peserta. Soalnya akan ada penjelasan tentang penggunaan room bahasa Indonesia karena di pagi hari ini kita akan kedatangan lagi ya eh, pemateri dari luar sehingga nanti ada pilihan untuk menggunakan ruangan bahasa Indonesia gitu jadi kita akan tunggu sebentar paling enggak ya semenit dua menit nunggu teman-teman lain yang belum bergabung jadi nanti penjelasannya bisa jelas di awal. Mungkin sebelum itu, sembari menunggu buat teman-teman yang mungkin baru gabung sekarang, izinkan saya buat menceritakan kembali tentang FDI 2021 ini. Ya. Ini adalah sebuah festival online pertama bertema demokrasi ekonomi di Indonesia. Dan demokrasi ekonomi sendiri sebenarnya merupakan cita-cita yang sudah terpatri ya di Undang-Undang Dasar 1945 Pasal 33 ayat 4. Ya. Dan sebenarnya sudah 76 tahun berlalu dan juga sudah direvisi juga sejak kemerdekaan. Namun rasanya demokrasi ekonomi belum menjadi wacana arus utama agenda ekonomi di Indonesia. Nah, oleh karena itu, di tahun ini, tema FDE 2021 adalah menyalakan kembali mimpi demokrasi ekonomi. Dan di sesi ke-8 ini, berjudul How Can We Accelerate the Birth of More Co-op Businesses? Nah, rangkaian acara dari FDE 2021 ini itu berlangsung selama tiga hari, dan hari ini adalah hari terakhir, dan juga dua pre-event. Ya. Di mana dua pre-event itu lomba blog dan video sudah kami laksanakan sebelumnya, dan kemarin kita sudah bertemu dengan para pemenangnya, dan membahas bagaimana mereka memproduksi video, dan juga bagaimana mereka menulis. Kayak gitu. Dan hari ini hari terakhir, hari ini sesi ke-8 dari total 10 sesi dan 2 pidato kunci. Ucapan terima kasih. Juga kami ingin sampaikan. kepada para pendukung ASEAN Solidarity Economy Council, Pak Asek, Ikopin, LSP2I, Platform Koperasi Digital atau KODI, Sigur Innovation Hub, dan juga PPKL Jaksel. Dan masih banyak lagi para pendukung seperti Yayasan Proklamator Bungata, CIH Unsut, Kosakti, Diksi, Kopindo, dan Insis Press. Dan acara ini juga diselenggarakan atas kerjasama banyak sekali lembaga ya yang berkenan untuk memberikan uh, dukungannya berupa pemateri ataupun moderator di seluruh rangkaian acara tiga hari ini. Nah mungkin uh, sebelum saya jelaskan tentang interpreter ruang interpreter saya akan kirimkan seperti biasa yang sudah berkali-kali ikut diskusi di Gapatma atau di FDI 2021 ini pasti tahu kalau misalnya uh, memberikan pertanyaan nanti melalui slido. Jadi di slido ini teman-teman bisa memberikan pertanyaan dan juga voting pertanyaan. Jadi apabila teman-teman nanti belum ada pertanyaan, nggak masalah, tetap aja buka slidonya buat bisa vote pertanyaan-pertanyaan teman-teman yang lain. Sehingga nanti kita akan jawab pertanyaannya, kita urutkan dari atas Dari vote yang paling banyak sampai yang vote yang paling sedikit, apabila waktunya memungkinkan. Oke, okay. sebenarnya kita mulai saja ya penjelasan tentang uh, ruang. Jadi karena hari ini kita kedatangan tamu internasional dan akan memakai full bahasa Inggris untuk di sesinya. Namun teman-teman yang merasa masih ragu untuk mendengarkan dalam bahasa Inggris. 
teman-teman bisa cek di fitur yang ada di Zoom di more atau nah, itu ada tulisan interpretation. Nah, teman-teman klik nanti teman-teman bisa klik ruang bahasa Indonesia. Jadi klik interpretation lalu klik bahasa Indonesia. Gitu. Namun apabila teman-teman ingin mendengarkan dalam bahasa Inggris, teman-teman nggak perlu melakukan apapun. Jadi nggak perlu masuk di ruang bahasa Inggris nggak perlu. Jadi teman-teman hanya uh, cukup ya nggak usah melakukan apapun kayak gitu ya. Jadi saya ulangi sekali lagi bagi teman-teman yang mau mendengarkan dalam bahasa Indonesia tinggal klik di fitur yang ada di Zoom. Teman-teman bisa klik interpretation lalu klik bahasa Indonesia. Tapi apabila teman-teman mau mendengarkan dalam bahasa Inggris nggak usah di nggak usah melakukan apapun itu. Dan teman-teman sebenarnya bisa bolak-balik secara uh, apa ya maksudnya bisa bolak-balik aja gitu. Misalnya kayak pengen nyobain bahasa Indonesia terus uh, di ofin gitu nggak masalah. Di situ setelah teman-teman klik bahasa Indonesia juga kalau mau nggak mendengarkan suara yang bahasa Inggris bisa di mute juga ada opsi untuk di mute gitu ya yeah. itu mungkin kita bisa langsung mulai pada pagi hari ini kita akan dimoderatori oleh Mbak Kiki dari Youth Ambassador of Global Cooperative Entrepreneur Halo Mbak Kiki Halo, selamat pagi. Pagi. Oke, okay. udah ready ya? Ya. Oke, okay, sip. Silahkan. Lagi. Ya, thank you, Mas Bima. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for being with us again in this morning and welcome for the new participant who uh, on this event. I am Okila, as now Kiki. Um, from Indonesia, and I will be your uh, moderators today. Um, this is um, interesting, uh, interesting discussion because uh, cooperative also recognized as a mechanism for fostering economic growth. Cooperative structure are so allowing um, individuals to pool their resources and uh, skills together to work toward a uh, common economic goals such as tourism, agriculture sectors, workers, etc., with aim to increasing uh, member incomes and uh, other goals. By working together, COOP members can achieve the goals that could not be achieved by individual alone in bringing seven cooperative principles. But how to start? How can it be sustained? Our speaker today uh, is the people who help a community uh, to incubate their cooperative in their place and uh, we'll share about what are they doing in um, their work to accelerate the birth of co-op business in their area. Um, the presentations uh, will be uh, presentations by uh, the speakers for 15 minutes and followed by a short discussion for each presentation. So um, uh, let me in introduce our first speakers. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Brett, uh, Greg Brodsky from um, the, uh, the, uh, the Start.coop. Uh, he is the co-director of uh, Start.coop. Uh, Mr. Greg, uh, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Selamat pagi. And first of all, I just want to say how much of an incredible honor it is to present to you all. Um, I, over 20 years ago, I actually studied abroad in Indonesia during my university, and I lived in Malang for um, several months, and uh, I still think about the tempeh I had there, and the nasi goreng, and the gado gado, so uh, I love Indonesia, I love the people of Indonesia, so when I got this invitation, I couldn't say no, because it was such a great honor, so um, I'm in the United States, and so I'm going to share my uh, slides and just uh, talk about what we're doing here to try to create more cooperatives. Okay, so the name of our program is start.coop. And here in the United States, um, we have a uh, huge wealth uh, inequality. So we have a lot of very rich people and then a lot of very poor people. And we know that uh, ownership is being increasingly concentrated in a handful of, of just a few people and is especially a problem 
uh, when we talk about people of color or, or black people here in the US that they don't have enough wealth and ownership. Uh, we also know that cooperatives uh, here in the United States uh, have a big impact when they're used. Um, we talk about the fact that maybe cooperatives are almost like hiding in, in plain sight, that they're here, but people don't see them all the time and don't talk about them. Um, so people belong to them, but they don't know what cooperatives are. And so the question is, is if cooperatives are so great, why aren't there more cooperatives? And we've identified three major reasons why we think uh, there are so few new cooperatives being started. Uh, fewer than 1% of new businesses in the U.S. are cooperatively owned. So why is that? Number one is there's a, a misunderstanding or misperception that even though a lot of people have heard the word cooperative, uh, only 11% of people in the United States can accurately define what a cooperative is. Many people have heard the word but can't really explain it. Number two is uh, for people who want to start cooperatively owned businesses, they feel like there's uh, a lack of support. They feel like it can feel uh, confusing or complicated compared to starting a traditional business. Uh, and finally, for those who know to start one and, and make it through the path, then there's also a lack of uh, financing or investment to, to make the business bigger. So we created an accelerator called Start That Co-op about four years ago to help support the entrepreneurs mainly focusing on this second problem of how do we bring more support to entrepreneurs who want to start cooperative own business. Um, we try to bring more people in uh, to cooperative ownership. We uh, share the stories of our graduates and, and the community. And so right now we get maybe uh, 100 to 120 uh, people inquiring every year about our program maybe uh, 75 to 85 people per year apply to our program. And then, uh, and then we, we choose the top six to eight uh, entrepreneurs every year who, uh, who we think have a business that can scale. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. So as we get these applications, we look at them, who can have a big impact, who has a real business plan, um, who's, you know, having the biggest social impact. And then we put them through our, our accelerator program. And so just to talk about what our accelerator program is, uh, there's a, a curriculum, almost like a, a, a mini education for, for business education. Um, there's mentorship, there is uh, coaching. We connect them to uh, other businesses and service providers. And we also give them a small investment. Um, so we really try to give them everything they need to be a successful business. This is uh, an overview of the kind of curriculum that we give to them. Uh, so each week they're focusing on a different part of the business, uh, everything from fundraising and presenting to ownership, governance, marketing, competition, financial, and even sort of the emotional aspect of being an entrepreneur. And then at the very end of the program, uh, we have them present to uh, the big community. So this year we got about 350 people to attend Zoom graduation, and we try to give them investment and community to help them support their business. Um, so yeah, so it's curriculum, investment, a big mentor community, uh, and then the, the service providers that help them as well. Um, and then the, the, the last aspect I, I wanna talk about a little bit is as we've been doing the program now for three years um, and each year we graduate uh, six to eight new cooperatives, we realized that one of the biggest problems was that they're not receiving enough financing and so uh, we, we would interview the entrepreneurs at the beginning of the program and we would say, what's your biggest problem? And they would say, lack of money. Uh, and we would interview them at the end of the program and we would say, what's your biggest problem? And they would say, lack of money. And so we uh, have actually now designed 
a very small investment fund to help uh, invest in the best graduates of our program. So our program itself is a, a nonprofit. I don't know what the uh, Indonesian equivalent is, but uh, the accelerator is a nonprofit. And then we also have this investment fund to invest in the, the graduates. So we're, we're just starting that and learning about what works, but we're trying to bring together a community of individual investors who want to invest in the teams. And we bring them to graduation and we also have them work with the entrepreneurs. And uh, yeah, and, and that's it. I'm, I'm happy to take more questions. I tried to keep it, um, you know, just give you the, the key parts. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Greg, for uh, your uh, presentations. It's very interesting that uh, in uh, incubating the co-op, we uh, I see that um, uh, in sixty weeks uh, of uh, fame that uh, we discuss in there. Um, yeah, so um, we still uh, we're still waiting for the questions, but uh, we have the interesting thing that. We have partnering with um, several uh, institutions to uh, this um, this uh, program. So, uh, can you uh, let us know more about this um, this uh, partnership thing? Yeah, thank you for that question. So, so as the entrepreneurs go through the program, they need different things, right? So, they need um, uh, help with their business models. So that comes from the staff and also the mentors. But then they also need help with uh, just different aspects of their we have this problem here's someone who's really good at it so we can just plug them in and make them more efficient at solving their problem um and and, and i think you know part of what we're trying to do that that is well i think there's two interesting things about what we're trying to do one is that we're trying to take the entrepreneurs who already have the great idea and already have the passion and the vision for the business and the second thing is that then we're trying to speed up their their process for them that we think it takes too long right now to create each cooperative. And we're trying to like systematize it for them uh, so that we're not doing one at a time. We're trying to say, hey, we've got a lot of resources and we can all do this faster and more efficiently. And I'm happy to to talk more or, or take questions. And we're waiting for uh, the uh, the next question from the participants. So um, I will introduce the uh, second uh, speakers uh, here. It's uh, uh, Rohan, Mr. Rohan Clark from uh, Australia. He is the uh, co-founder of uh, Incubator.com, and uh, Mr. Rohan, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Kiki, and thank you everyone for having me today. Um, yeah, this is a, a echo of Greg's um, thoughts. It's an honor to be able to kind of to, to present uh, to you today and talk about what we're doing with Incubator Co-op. Uh, Incubator Co-op was started around uh, about coming on five years ago now, and we've, we've, we've run a, a number of uh, accelerator programs and incubator programs. Kami menemui beberapa program accelerator. Apa yang saya pikirkan, pikirkan hari ini adalah memberikan keuntungan pikir. Dan saya membawakan pelajaran terkait dengan the kind of in gestation currently. So it might just provide a different kind of perspective on some of the things that we've learned from incubator co-op. Um, so. If I put this works currently, hey, it works, fantastic. So 
The first of these is the uh, Regen Farmers Mutual. Uh, it's, a, its journey started just over a year ago. Um, and its, uh, its objective is to help um, Australian farmers accessing incentivized and rewarded for doing good things on their farm through environmental markets. So that's, that's uh, the Regen Farmers Mutual. And the second co-op that uh, we're going to look at is the is Wayfarer co-op. And some of you may have seen this before. Uh, Wayfarer is also started around about 18 months ago now. And it went through the platform co-ops now accelerator program. Um, and you can think of Wayfarer a bit like Airbnb, um, but rather than being owned by shareholders in the US, it's owned by cooperatively, cooperatively by local communities via their tourism boards. And so under the model, it invests 50% of its booking fees back into local communities. Um, so while the guest kind of pays the same as they would otherwise, and while the host receives the same as they would under the Airbnb model, the local community is actually getting funding uh, but for, via Wayfair. So there are two co-ops that we kind of, kind of just kind of step through and give you some like five lessons as to, to what we've learned um, with respect to you know, how you go about you know, incubating a, and starting up a co-op. So the first, the first and most, probably the most important thing is, and this is no different to any startup really, but it's, it comes through time and again, that's um, in our incubator process, that's really, really important to go beyond kind of abstract value statements and really find that simple, clear way to, to express, you know, the reason why your new co-op is coming into existence. So with respect to the Regen Farmers Mutual, this is something that our, our members, our farmers can really easily understand. So currently when they go, you know, uh, if they want to access environmental markets, um, currently 50% of the revenue goes to the broker that, that, that's dealing with them. And, they, and, and farmers uh, across the country feel like they're getting ripped off or taken advantage of. And so very, they very, very clearly understand that like by creating their own farmer owned broker, that they can retain more of the value, that they can retain, the objective is to, to, for farmers to retain 80% of the value with 10% of the value going to a local group to deliver on ground services and only 10% being retained by the mutual to cover its operating costs, its overheads. So that's a really clear value proposition for the members that, that they're getting more of the value from, from these transactions. So kind of similarly, or, or in contrast, Wayfarer, it's, it's very clear that, so in Australia, there's about $150 million that is paid to accommodation booking flat platforms, principally Airbnb, with those profits all disappearing offshore without even really tax being paid locally. So, it's a really simple concept for people to understand that with Wayfarer, that money stays in the community and is reinvested back into the local communities where that tourism occurs. So it's a really simple proposition that people can kind of pick up on. Okay, so that was the first lesson. So the second one is um, that it's, it, it, it pays for a new co-op to be obsessively member centric. And what we mean by that is that co-ops are always about delivering value to their members first. Um, and so with respect to, there's a lot going on in this page, but with respect to the, the, the Regen Farmers Mutual, basically over the last uh, 12 months, um, we've run three series of, of, uh, of programs, of workshops with, we've now had 80 um, farmers and conservation organizations and some government departments come through these workshops and each of those workshops for anywhere from three to, to six weeks in terms of total. And through those workshops, we were able to co-create the, the, the mutual um, with farmers. So what this has meant is that like it's, farmers are you know, embedded in the DNA of the mutual. Um, and this, is, this creates a, like a, you know, a competitive advantage that like is you know, very difficult for other organizations to compete with. So you can see here that um, the business process of the mutual um, is what this engaged defined market, that's what it does. And in, embedded in what it's done 
it, it, do, it, it does. We've gone through and we've, and we've worked with the farmers and asked them, what does it need to do to deliver you value? And so throughout the process, every, at every step of the, of, of the process, farmers are central to the decisions of the mutual. So the idea is that farmers, like this, this mutual is really focused on delivering value to its members. Um, the, the, um, in terms of the, the Wayfarer, it's slightly different. Now, like, so with Wayfarer, the members are individual farmers. It's actually, they're actually going to be tourism boards. So tourism boards are like semi-government kind of entities. And because of that, they tend, typically are, are larger and better resourced, but they're also slower moving. You know, government's typically slower moving than you know, an, an individual. And so th therefore the, the process of our co-creation with our members kind of has reflected this. What we've been doing instead is to focus on developing a really deep relationship with one tourism board, a very large tourism board in Australia. And what we're doing is we're co-creating the, 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 the co-op with that, that, that one member and then developing relationships with a lighter touch, like with other regions around the country at the same time. So what this enables us to do is to really understand deeply what tourism boards need as a member and to prove the model before we seek to roll it out across the country. All right, so that's our second lesson that pays to understand and focus on your member. The third lesson is that um, if you want to, is that you really want to build from your competitive advantage and co-ops have a really distinct advantage that, that other business models can't replicate is because you're wholly aligned to your members and no one else, no, no other organizational structure is, has that alignment. So in a, in a, in the Regen Farmers Mutual, this is kind of one of those rare moments in my career and it's been a few years now where every organization we meet from government to conservation organization to farmer groups, they can all see that the need of the mutual because you know the farmers are getting ripped off. They're not being incentivized to, to do these, um, to participate. And they, so not only can these organizations see the, that this mutual is needed, but they all can, also can see how they can work with it, what it how they're, they're aligned to it. Um, so, so it becomes immediately obvious to, the, the, to them how they can work with the mutual and how they can engage with it. And the, the thing is that other brokers in, this, in the industry, so the privately owned brokers that are owned by venture capital funds and what have you, they just can't compete because they don't have that same alignment. Um, again, Wayfair is slightly different. Um, the same principle applies um, and arrives at the same place of, of, of this alignment, but you can, but the way it works with the way, Wayfarer is that um, the platform is owned by the tourism boards and their tourism boards, their role is to promote um, tourism in their, local, um, in their local region, right? So because they're promoting tourism in the local region and Wayfarer is delivering, delivering reinvestment in the local region, that's where the alignment occurs. So our members are wholly aligned with the objective of Wayfarer to promote uh, local regional tourism. And then other, other stakeholders fall in, uh, fall in in a similar way as the, the mutual, they fall in behind and, and they actually um, are also aligned. So you can see that hosts being those property owners now offer their properties to, the bene to service the benefit of the community um, because the, the fees are invested back in tourism projects. So these projects, these tourism projects, which are the way that these that, that, that Wayfarer reinvests in the community, they connect everyone together. Um, as as Greg said, funding is the real is a real key issue for any co-op, and what um, um, and similar to to start co-op, uh, incubator co-op is is working with our peak body to create a, a co-op development fund. But one of the lessons we've we've learned along the way is that funding always starts with the members. So you need to find a way to actually um, incentivize or find channels whereby members can um, find a model where they can they can participate in helping to fund the mutual. So in the in the Regen Farmers Mutual case, we're going we, we're about to undertake a four month uh, program to recruit members, and out of that program, we're aiming to raise five million dollars from a thousand farmers. 
which will become the, the scale up capital to enable the mutual to, 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 to grow. Um, in contrast, uh, Wayfarer, again, because our members are quasi government entities, they've got resources to pay up front. So the way we're doing that is we're structuring them to pay entry fees, which enable for the local setup costs. And then um, additionally, they are, um, because they'll be supporting the model and incentivized to participate in the model, they'll employ people locally on their own staff. And so that they'll be investing in the model by employing people uh, locally. And then the model allows for once it scales through rebates to then start funding those local employees that, that of, of, of the members. So it's a different model. One's, one's raising equity from members and others raising um, is charging members fees. And the final thing that kind of lesson I just want to share with you is that like, love the concept of co-ops helping co-ops. In Australia, it's proven relatively difficult to, 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 to get support from a lot of our larger co-ops. Um, and so what we've found is that you can also look beyond co-ops to the social enterprise um, networks, to, to other aligned organisations to help, you know, to help engage because they'll be aligned with what you're seeking to do. So in terms of um, the Regen Farmers Mutual, we're working with Landcare and Landcare has over 6,000 local groups spread across the country and over 100,000 members. And Landcare is 100% aligned to, our, to, to, the, to the objectives of the mutual. So we'd be able to enter into an MOU with them where they're actually going to be introducing us to their 100,000 members. So that's the way that that, 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 that works in that, in that circumstance. Not necessarily a co-op, but like a, a large community-based organisation. And with Wayfarer, we're actually um, engaging with the social enterprise networks. And again, because we have this model where Wayfarer is, is, is effectively reinvesting back into the local um, community and focused on reinvesting into the, the social enterprises within those communities, that those existing social enterprises networks are heavily motivated to, to, to participate and support. So um, that's the mechanism we're using to engage uh, uh, co-op-like entities in the, um, in the Australian ecosystem. So that's it. Five lessons from, from two startup co-ops. Um, I hope you uh, found it interesting. And back to you guys. Back to you, Kiki. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rohan. Um, yeah, it's uh, very interesting that um, uh, the unique value of Wayfarer is the benefit uh, that will give into uh, community development. Since in Turin, uh, it's very rare to find the kind of business that uh, builds back the community. We can see that uh, in Labuan Bajo, in our country, Indonesia, uh, the, the money is going outside the Labuan Bajo. Uh, and um, there's nothing left in, um, the, uh, for the Komodo dragon or and um, for the uh, native people there. So uh, the money goes to another place and uh, the people stays in, um, uh, stays in suffer because <clears throat> there are no uh, uh, build back in their, uh, in their, for their community uh, from the tourism. So um, uh, could you uh, uh, let us know about the, uh, the uh, any project that uh, already, already run? From the uh, the built back uh, in a built back form uh, from the the from the project in Wayfarer. The so so Wayfarer is about to start its first pilot. So it started eighteen months ago, and it's it's been um, it's it's pilot with its first tourism region called Destination Gippsland starts in October. So we haven't as yet. You know, hit the ground and actually started operations. Um, the 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 three projects that that or the three areas, the pro project areas that that like are, are that are being proposed. Um, so the way it works is, the when the guest stays at a uh, accommodation, when they're checking out, they can choose from one of three projects that they can donate their their fifty percent to. And so those three those three areas in destination Gippsland case will be. Um, what's called tracks and trails. So it, it'll be, you know, like um, walking in the, in the wilderness. So it's more of an adventure or, or um, type um, 
um, with, within an environment kind of perspective. There'll be um, invest protecting koalas. <laughs> There's a project to protect, protect koalas and, um, and other Australian uh, um, indigenous um, animals, um, which clearly people feel um, there's a certain people that respond to. And there's also uh, another um, to invest in the local food trails. So it's a, um, this part of the world is very much a food and wine um, destination. And so the idea is to create trails that people can kind of follow. So um, we haven't as yet identified, but we've, that's part of the process we're actually going through right now, working with the local um, community to work out what are the social enterprises that exist within those. So one, for example, within the tracks and trails is the idea is that they're, um, of creating a, a business that can support the, the maintenance of those trails because they're wilderness, they need to be weeded and, and um, looked after. And typically that's been done by, you know, outsourced contractors that like um, may or may not, um, you know, they might be big, very large construction company or something. And the idea is rather than do that, we create an entity that's um, 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 owned by the employees and by the local um, government. And then that, that is the entity that, that one builds the trails and then maintains them. And so that's, that's kind of the, the social enterprise that, that, that potentially could be catalyzed. The one other thing that I should mention is that we're looking at um, that 1% um, of the revenue we would like to set aside for international cooperative development. So the idea that this model could be replicated um, fed, on a federated basis globally is really of interest. And so if we could find a way to actually create a non-profit you know, entity that, the way, that Wayfair and others could contribute to, to create knowledge sharing and, and shared infrastructure, that's, that's something that we think is, is kind of another thing that that kind of model can, can enable. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Rohan, for um, the explanation. It's very interesting. Uh, and um, since Indonesia, uh, we have very, uh, so many uh, tourism places and we hope that um, more uh, business type like this can uh, more develop in Indonesia. Um, thank you. And, um, and then we are moving on to the third speakers. Uh, this is Mbak Ani Sahada. Eh, Sahada is from um, uh, Inno, Cir Inno Circle um, Co. Uh, it's an incubator co op in, um, in, in Indonesia. So, um, Mbak Ani, uh, stage is yours. Okay. Uh, good morning, Kiki. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, so, I hope all of you uh, safety and also good and healthy in the, in the meantime. Okay, um, today is a cooperative day in Indonesia and I would like to uh, wish happy 74th cooperative day. And 74 years ago, our founding fathers uh, declared about cooperative as the pillar of our economic nations. And we are uh, now is the generation that have a duty to preserve the economic democracy in this country. And also in our Undang-Undang um, 1945 uh, said bahwa perekonomian disusun sebagai usaha bersama berdasar atas asas kekeluargaan. Uh, so, um, maybe I will talk um, part of English and Indonesia, I will mix it. <laughs> Because also the participant uh, from Indonesia and first I would like to introduce myself. My name is Anis and my background is I'm a party, uh, I'm practitioner uh, in cooperative uh, maybe since around four, five, eight uh, years ago. And I am uh, established an incubator for startups in 2018 to accelerate startup growth even though in my journey there is 
a lot of uh, obstacles starting from an interest from the oh, investor yeah. and unskill of team, limited capital that have an impact to our startup growth. And I also joined in the Association of Indonesian Cooperative for Indonesian mm -hmm. Consortium for Cooperative Innovations. Uh, this institution, we aim to build a space for cooperative um, innovation in Indonesia, where we founded um, uh, to respond to strategic condition that need to be addressed quickly and appropriately. Uh, we talk about the, we, we have an issue in the industrial revolution 4.0 that has spawned many um, community that emerged sharing economy business model, which is marked by the proliferation startup company in many areas. That's why we are talking and urge about an innovation and startup co-op uh, because of that external conditions. Okay, maybe next. Uh, next. Um, so first of all, because I'm talking about how to accelerate the birth of the co -op, uh, cooperative uh, business, I would like to talk, uh, maybe deliver about why cooperative business matters. First, maybe um, same with Greg, uh, talking about the inequality in Indonesia, and it's I think maybe it's getting worse during the pandemic, where uh, Oxfam have uh, published the, uh, the report that uh, four men are estimated to be born at the same amount as the purest uh, 100 million people and the richest 1% now on half the country's wealth, where we realize that if we continue this condition, it will be a uh, heavy impact of jealousy of the poor people we know about um, Indonesia like to bullying each other, I think because they are um, jealous to few people in the uh, few people in the top of an economic and they are not and jealousy is also given back on unstable of politic also and how we solve this problem is we have to uh, ownership and wealth should be shared uh, and cooperative business practice are better for both society and economy. Uh, and I think this uh, business model, uh, the governance, where uh, not only talking about the business and also democracy economy is the best solution for this main problem. And, and next. And what kind of business should we create in the midst of industrial revolution 4.0? Uh, well, actually, in the midst of this era, we are not only talking about the uh, technology and also Swap uh, said in his books that uh, the more important that main effect on um, business is about a customer expectations on product enhancement, collaboration, innovation, and also organizational forms. It means that um, the, the main in what kind of business we have to deliver is a business like a, a platform that combine the technologies and how we can collaborate each others and have a sustainable uh, governance, such kind of cooperative. Okay, next. Okay, um, there is. Uh, we have to consider cooperative and advantage and also disadvantage. Well, basically, I'm practitioner in a business, and there is a lot of a lack when and a lot of um, obstacle when I establish with a cooperative uh, way. Such kind of I have a lot of an opportunity, some investor to invest on my startup, but uh, we have no one vision, like they offer um, majority ownership and we, because I have, um, uh, because I want to establish cooperative and it just doesn't work to investor uh, monopoly the ownership because I wanted to share it to the worker, to the other investor, and uh, also the founder. And that's why some of uh, uh, investor uh, doesn't like my, my business model. 
and the disadvantage is also the limited capital and because i have a lack of capital i haven't a uh, unskilled team because i only paid them with the low uh, wages and that's the multiplier uh, effect and impact on it um, and the impact is on vision management and absence of motivation and uh, also the regulation cooperative in Indonesia in the beginning of 2018 it doesn't support for cooperative such kind of uh, we need 20 people to establish co-op uh, that's uh, of course it doesn't agile for us to establish a startup because we only need to till uh, two person to five person it's enough and in here we need uh, 20 people that's a lot uh, it doesn't agile for us to establish a business right um, and then uh, but today uh, government has reduced the establishment of cooperative membership it only needs uh, nine people uh, but i hope it only needs three people to establish it the rigid regulations and uh, so many people doesn't know about cooperative suite uh, for them to establish a um, startup uh, because they only know the limited uh, how it's a maybe private company that's suitable for them because they are can do anything that there and they have a lot of um, advantages but and based on my practices uh, I would like to share uh, my best uh, advantage established co-op that is um, I think that the cooperative is the best uh, the, 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 the rational and the logical for us with the limited resources limited um, knowledge for us to collect each other uh, with my college uh, one to three person uh, gather in uh, one company to establish um, and that is very rational and logical for us to establish because uh, we have to um, to build a company and uh, yeah we have uh, more easier to gather a vision and this is I get it from uh, some reference about the advantage and the disadvantage okay next okay and uh, how to how to accelerate uh how to accelerate the part of um uh, cooperative business cooperative i think everyone knowing about a sandbox right uh startup uh, drama in korea it was the best socialization tells about uh especially in indonesia talk about the startup and talk about in incubator um, after uh, this drama release in Indonesia, be before this drama, they are doesn't know about what kind of incubator, what is the incubator it is, and etc. But after this drama release, uh, everyone more easier to understand what the importance of an incubator. Like uh, we need, uh, why we need an incubator or the place where our idea have uh, we can pitch our idea we can find our investor we can find our team we can find the community the mentorship and etc that is the place uh, we called an incubator or the more easier to understand it a sandbox like an in a startup drama korea um uh yeah in an in incubator uh, we can gather uh, stakeholders such kind of university and funding and community to build a new enterprises or a new startup and it was bridging by the uh, incubator next and the last i would like to say to boomer i think we have to talk about cooperative seriously because uh, boomer have a lot of resources capital but they have no willingness to help us as a start of co-op to to accelerate our idea or believe in on our idea where we we build in a technological base uh they are why well, they are not uh, trust on us because uh, boomer uh, prefer 
uh, invest on a conventional business model um, such as they have a need and uh, yeah conventional but they they doesn't they, they doesn't understand about what kind of platform they doesn't understand about the business around with technology and the importance of data the importance of uh, customer delivery and etc and if we uh, care about the sustainability of cooperative in here i think uh, boomer where they have a lot of resources they have to share their capital uh, to the, the born of uh, a bis new business and it through uh, incubator or a kind of uh, incubator or accelerator where we will deliver it to the uh, entrepreneur or startup co-op and we will monitoring it with uh, mentorship uh, gathered with university and the government Okay, uh, maybe uh, that's the last of my uh, slides, and thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mbak Anis, for the um, the presentation. Um, it's very interesting that the last um, presentation, uh, the last slide, it's softly provocating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something provocating for um, the co-op context in uh, in Indonesia today. So um, I would like to um, we would like to know that in co-op context in Indonesia that you've been incubating now. Um, how much are they now? And um, can you share one of the interesting projects and uh, um, yeah, the one of interesting project and uh, you think that. Uh, helping uh, in uh, the helping the community for uh, increasing the car business in uh, very fast and um, affecting many people in there. Okay, the total maybe is around uh, almost 50, maybe 48, uh, starting from 2018, yeah. But uh, the journey is doesn't stop. Um, this is the roughly um, in the midst of the incubation. They have an obstacle like uh, lack of vision. They have no uh, determination. So they just leave their idea and the business. So we are as an incubator couldn't do anything and just, uh, okay, yeah, this is the part of the process, I think. And the interesting project uh, is first uh, and now I run a platform call for delivery service for um, vegetable uh, culinary and also for how say uh, culinary uh, I forget uh, yeah clean uh, delivery service uh, platform uh, the interesting is uh, whatever our um, whatever our goals in cooperative, even though it's a social vision, I think if we run a business, we have to get profit. So we have a minimum uh, viable profit first, not minimum viable product. Uh, we have to make a profit, even if that is a little bit, because if we are just um, uh, focus on our fish social vision, but there's no profit, we will lost our team. So whatever our social vision it is, we have to make it profit first. And that's I get focused in the last six months. And I do realize uh, that we are not um, uh, achieve our passion, but we are achieve what we can make it uh, money and have an, an impact because some of our uh, but because before I so struggle on my idealism, but there's no result. <laughs> let's see, uh, there's no result. Then I just pragmatism. Okay, let's I change my mind that I have to uh, realize how to really give an economic impact on my uh, uh, circle. Can make an employee still have wages and etc. Then I have to make a money, and I do not talk about. A lot of cooperative, uh, but in practically in how we organize, we still cooperative. That's maybe. Thank you, Kiki. Um, 
And um, now uh, I believe that there is more questions uh, for the speakers in the Lido. So uh, uh, we will move on to uh, the discussion. Uh, thank you, Mas Dima. So we have um, <clears throat> questions from uh, Ina to uh, Greg. How's your experience in raising investment funds for your co -op cohort? Is it any different from raising funds, normal startups? Um, for the questions, I uh, maybe I will uh, directly ask the speakers to uh, answer. Sure. Uh, Mr. Greg, please. Yes, th thank you. So thank you, Ina. Um, yeah, so I don't know if it's different in Indonesia, right? I can only speak for the United States, but I, I think in the, here in the United States, it is very different than normal startups. Um, there are a few other uh, loan funds here in the, in the U.S. that are trying to raise money, um, but we're trying to create uh, equity funds. So we're trying to bring together individuals that want to invest in cooperatives, almost like they're investing in startups. So the, the individuals might be uh, similar kinds of people, but the way they get their money back is really different. And the main difference that we realize is that in a regular startup, um, usually what happens here is that the share price goes up. The way someone gets their money back is, you know, maybe they buy a, a share in a company for $10 and it goes up to, $20, um, but that's based on uh, selling ownership of the company eventually. So um, it's because, you know, people are trying to buy a stock and then sell a stock. And with cooperatives, uh, most of the time, it's about creating long-term ownership, right? For all of us in any country. So it's really difficult to have the stock price go up. Um, and so we have to educate our investors that the way we pay back investors is out of actual uh, company sales or revenue. So I, I really appreciated uh, Annis's comments about uh, making sure that the companies uh, have sales and are profitable because th the, that's how we pay back uh, investors, whether it's loan fund or equity fund, is the cooperative has to have enough sales and profits to be able to pay people back. It's not just based on the share price going up in price. I'd echo that, Greg. Um, so in Australia, that um, the, the the same challenge, obviously, because all cooperatives are the same. They don't they don't have a, a share price going up. So one of the things that we do is we talk to um, co-ops about embedding uh, a return on capital objective in their um, in the uh, whether it's in the constitution or there's a, uh, a policy at the board level, but the idea being that an investor can see that the the, the cooperative is seeking to, to to generate a return on capital of ten percent or fifteen percent, and so therefore paying a dividend to investors, those investors feel confident that they'll receive that dividend, and that's the way they receive their their um. They, they receive their return on their investment through dividends as opposed to through share price appreciation. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll just add one more comment, which is that we work a lot with our entrepreneurs on how to raise money so they can scale their business. And I think one of the things cooperatives have to do is uh, talk both languages. And by that, I mean, they have to be able to say, uh, you know, here's how we're going to pay you back and, and make sort of the financial case. But then also here's the social impact of, of our cooperative as well. Uh, because, you know, if someone just wants to make money, uh, investing in cooperatives is probably not the easiest way to do it. So we also have to be able to say, yes, you'll make a little bit of money back, but then also there's this very large impact. And so when we bring our investors together, we try to talk about both sides of that. Can I ask you a question, Greg? Um, yep. Just just following that yeah. same 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 question. So in Australia, where the, the the cooperative sector is currently, there's a couple of very large cooperatives 
who are, uh, want to put together a cooperative development fund. And there's, a, and there's, a, there's examples of this in Canada, there's a cooperative development fund and, and elsewhere. And so they want to actually go, um, we will put 5% of our surplus each year into the development fund. And that fund will, will make loans to cooperatives, startup cooperatives, but those loans will be more equity-like. So there'll be loans, but they'll be, you know, maybe they get paid over, repaid over 10 years. And that, 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 you know, in the event that the cooperative can't pay an interest that year, it won't kind of round, um, they won't be wound up. Does that, in your experience, is that, is that like the loan funds in, does that work in your circumstance? Are, the, are other cooperatives supporting the emergence of funding? Yeah, we, we have had a hard time getting funding from the large cooperatives. Um, and so the, the, the cooperative funds that exist here in the United States are uh, individuals or other um, uh, nonprofits who want to fund this kind of work. But we've found that the large cooperatives are very focused on their own members for obvious reasons, but it's been very hard for them to, to get them to put their actual money in. Uh, originally, when we started our program, that was our strategy is we said, we, we'll go to the large cooperatives, we'll try to get them to put some money in. And maybe now that we've run the program for, you know, three years, maybe we could go back and be a different story, but, uh, but we, we had a very hard time getting them to do it. Okay, um, uh, I can see uh, Tejera raising her hands. Um, All right. Um, I just want to add to some. Add. I just want to add some comments. Hi, Greg. Hi, Ron. Nice to see you here. Um, actually, Indonesia we has a, a what is institution? Actually, this government institution to give a sub loan to co-op. Uh, we call it like a LPDB. I, I don't know how to expl uh, explain in English. Uh, so they will give um soft loan to co-op and uh with the certain uh, requirements like uh, two years uh, general meeting or things like that. Um, but we, we really, we don't have uh, like what the Canada have um, cooperative funding like in, in, in Australia, uh, this really cooperative movement to initiate the, the institution. But here the government is already uh, initiated to uh, uh, build this institution. Uh, that's my comment. Uh, thank you, uh, Kiki. Um, thank you, Tehera, for the information. And um, we're moving on to the uh, second. And this will uh, answer the questions first. Okay. Mungkin saya jawab pakai bahasa ya. Okay. Um, bagaimana saya mau elaborasikan pengalaman saya membangun koperasi? Apakah memulai dari modal atau dari orang? Jadi saya uh, bereksperimentasi. I have an experiment uh, build cooperative uh, from people first, and unfortunately it doesn't work because uh, we are have a three people with a with the one vision to create a startup club and also to create a business. But uh, the happen is, uh, the basically is activists and have a lot of more talk and uh, cooperative, more, more idealism, how we uh, build um, uh, idealistik and cooperative uh, terlalu idealis dalam membangun kooperasi uh, sehingga in the point of demokrasi uh, kita sangat uh, we have a difficult to make um, decisions see uh, meanwhile in business we have to make a decision day by day and we have to take it fastly and then um, now uh we have uh the capital is important uh, uh we couldn't run uh, our business without capital first because from there um 
uh, we can accelerate our business. I ever mentioned by Pak Nur Sutrisno, uh, he ever said that uh, koperasi akan sulit berkembang kalau pendapatan PDB kita juga uh, uh, tidak be, belum mengalami pertumbuhan seperti itu. Itu akan memberikan uh, dampak terhadap um, apa namanya pertumbuhan uh, koperasi juga uh, imbang apa per, pertumbuhan dan kemudian uh, seimbang dengan pertumbuhan koperasinya itu juga. Jadi um, itu mungkin uh, sedikit pengalaman saya. Oke. Okay. Tapi itu Oke, tentu saja guys. pengalaman saya yang masih terbatas empat uh, lima tahun belakangan ini uh, mungkin uh, akan lebih berbeda dengan pengalaman saya ke depan bahwasanya people have uh, the main con uh, main important on the starting a business. Thank you. Oke, okay. oke okay, thank you, Anis. Because Kiki is leaving now, I will cover her. Uh, I see that. Pincetus Kepu want to add some opinion. Halo, Pincetus. Ya, Mas sorry. Bima. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Mas Bima, ini kita campur-campur nih bahasa Indonesia, bahasa <laughs> no. Inggris. Karena ya, Mbak Hira. Mbak Anies, selamat bertemu ya. Selamat pagi, Pak. Oke, okay, one of your slides put in the first um, rank that you experience that it is easy to build a cooperative. When you put people menempatkan orang-orang in the first and the foremost then you are way facing the main problem and the main point of building a cooperative that is education so it is not easy to build a cooperative when you do not start with education but everybody has its own experience then we have to learn from one to another thank you <laughs> thank you for the response pa <laughs> salam sukses bu salam sukses jadi mungkin kalau boleh saya menanggapi pak justru Teman-teman jauh lebih memahami koperasi ketika mereka berpraktek, ketika mereka menghadapi masalah, dan akhirnya mereka uh, bertemu pada titik, oh uh, saya butuh ini, dan saya butuh ini, dan ternyata koperasi di tengah jalan itu adalah jawabannya. Bukan dengan doktriner me, uh, mengatakan bahwasanya koperasi is the best way for your business, atau we have to run... Uh, our business through kooperatif gitu. Ternyata it doesn't work gitu, Pak. Um, ternyata ketika kita di tengah jalan dan menghadapi banyak permasalahan, di titik situlah kita akhirnya memahami uh, best on praktek terlebih dahulu gitu mungkin. Sehingga proses awal saya yang mengedukasi terlalu banyak ternyata justru membuat uh, mereka dan uh, tidak diimbangi dengan bisnisnya akhirnya pada lepas satu persatu. But Uh, of course, education is a main pillar in cooperative. <laughs> thank you, Pak. Okay, thank you, Baris, for your reflection to building a co cooperative. Uh, okay, we will next to the question, yeah. Uh, from Abizar, what is the what is the role of the state toward cooperative in your country? Maybe Rohan can answer first. Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> there's, there's um, it, it goes in swings and roundabouts. Um, so if you go back to the 1930s and 1940s in Australia, cooperatives were hugely supported by, by government. Um, they're, they're less so uh, today. 
the role of um, the role of government um, is they treat cooperatives as much like any other co uh, corp, um, business co corporation organisation. Um, we uh, challenge the challenge governments both at the um, national and the kind of the local level to uh, to understand the the cooperatives kind of deliver more than um, your equivalent cor corporate corporate so that they deliver social objectives as as, as um, Greg was talking to before they they, they deliver impact um, in a way that uh, traditional companies can't so our part of our challenge is to to engage with government and to to get them to understand that cooperatives can deliver impact in a way that uh, and so potentially could be treated in ways that um, other uh, companies do. but as it stands today most uh, governments just look at co uh, cooperatives in Australia as much like any other co company there are some leftover there are some leftover benefits that like re remain from the 1930s and 40s so our you know cooperatives in Australia operate under their own section of the tax act from 1945 and so they have some benefits that flow through there but that's that's more of a hangover so that that would be Kind of my response to that, I guess. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Maybe next, Greg, from US, you can share what the state support for the cooperative. Yeah, it, it is amazing to see how similar uh, some of our answers are. So I would say my answer is very similar to Rohan's. Uh, mm -hmm. there are, they're looked at as corporations like any other corporation, and there are some special leftover benefits um, from a long time ago, mostly around uh, the farmer and agricultural co-ops. And so the tax benefits that we have all relate to the farmer agricultural co-ops and the rest of us kind of claim that even though it's not written for us. So when we have, you know, driver co-ops or technology co-ops, we use the same uh, tax benefit. But, um, but here in the U.S., there's not a lot of government support for cooperatives like except for that one tax perk. So they, they happen, but nothing special. We kind of have to fight for it, just like any other business. Okay, okay. Thank you, Greg. I think Kiki is joining us again. Hello, Kiki. Yeah, uh, apologize okay. for, the, uh, for the issues. I just get back in. Yeah, um, um, and... Um, uh, the third speaker for the questions, uh, Mbak Anis, what is the role of the state uh, towards cooperative in your country? I think um, when, I know we were in uh, we were Indonesian, but maybe our two speakers want to know in our context too. So, please. Well, I think uh, <laughs> um, in here there is a lot of. Uh, audience uh, have proper answer uh, how our state toward cooperative in our country, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we have a lot of um, PR, yeah, uh, homework that we have to finish it uh, because um, from regulations and also Tahira maybe LPDP it doesn't helpful for the begin of COP, apa, new startup yeah because they need apa, asset untuk dipinjamkan and it really doesn't help us to get funding um, easier funding and then the connection between uh, the, all the existing cooperative to the new cooperative, we have to solve it also. There's we need a bridging uh, between existing co-op to the newborn cooperative, and maybe maybe. But I I didn't see that our country deliver this uh, policy to help us solve this problem, especially me um, as a. Uh, uh, practitioner in a co op, but um, uh, uh, the regulation that help us that help me in the meantime, maybe the establish of nine people. Uh, uh, more than it, I didn't see um, good uh, uh, policies yet. Okay, 
Thank you. Maybe Tahira will edit. <laughs> Um, thank you. Um, so, um, can we move on to second uh, questions or Tehera wants to add something? Because uh, Mbak Anis was mentioning Tehera first. Uh, I think in the, in the past we have a, uh, a bit um advanced uh, policy for uh, towards cooperative like uh, support for government but uh, uh, they to but uh, behind that the effect of the of the uh, policy uh, make the make cooperative uh, not resilient so they I think it's get a, like a spoiled um, co-op what happened in, in, in the past and maybe this this time we we see as the young generation we see the impact of the policy so uh, this time we look uh, I better agree with Anis with what happened here we agree that um, some um, policy it's not support at all for cooperative developments as I said last last night. Uh, but uh, but I think the, the initiative for for some people will will make difference for the future. So I hope with people who who gather here last night and today this morning, uh, will give insight to many people and more people to aware that um, what the policy for cooperative development is not uh, still uh, unsupport as uh, as many aspects. Right. Thank you. Kiki, thank you, Anis. Good luck for you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, let's move on to the uh, next questions. Is uh, for Rohan. Uh, how long does the process? Um, I'm gonna. So I was just thinking about something that I probably should have said in relation to the last question. So I'm gonna come back to it because on the there's a one positive thing that we're seeing with respect to government, um, and that's um, but it's not cooperative um, only for cooperatives, but like the idea that social procurement has become um, something that that certainly in Australia has become a a, a focus. So that governments um, uh, prefer to deal with um, social enterprise so they'll preference social enterprise in their in their buying that idea is spreading so that um, uh, regions have social procurement policies that apply for all the businesses so the large businesses in that in that region will adopt a, a social procurement um, um, framework and also preference social enterprise and in that context we're now starting to see that um, it's taken a while, but like cooperatives being um, included as part of that social enterprise. So, so benefiting from social procurement. So whether it's a, a cleaning cooperative um, that um, is owned by its employees being preferred over a commercial cooperative or in the case of Wayfarer, that in a sense is part of what we're talking to tourism boards about to say, well, you can um, support this model and by, and by doing so, you'll have reinvestment back in your local community. That's, that idea is, is kind of highly aligned to social procurement. So I pro probably should have said that in relation to the last question, that that's one of the positives that we're seeing a kind of an emerging trend, um, notwithstanding the fact that they haven't been strongly supported till now. Um, and here is saying, yep, so that's, that's, just looks like it's a common, is that a similar experience in Indonesia, Hira? Yes, uh, now they have a, like a precedent uh, instruction for the social, uh, social entrepreneurship policy. Uh, this is still drafting and then they will uh, discuss it maybe in the next, uh, months or next year I, I don't know but this is already uh prepared thank you Ren. yeah awesome okay um and so how long does the process of engage to find market and execute and deliver 
so that relates to um, the, the farmer mutual. Um, and I guess the best way to answer this is to say that what, what happens is um, we have, um, so in Australia, there's, I don't know, I think there's 100,000 100, farmers across the country, maybe more. Um, and the, our objective is for the mutual to have, like it, it only will employ say six people. So the way it interacts with this very, very large number of farmers is by um, through um, these, these networks, these farmer networks. So land care is a, is a farmer network. And so, by, so, the, so in terms of how long does the process, the first part of that process, engage, define, is about that local land care group engaging their local farmers to for them to understand what the opportunity is for them to, 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 to better manage the land um, in, in their region to, and in doing so to create environmental market um, uh, products. It's kind of difficult to explain, but like so to create carbon credits. And so that first part is done at the local level that engaged and defined, and that could take anywhere from three to six months um, but the local, the, the local land care group um, is leading that. Then they will come to, to the mutual and the mutual will then help them take that product to market. So they will, they will, um, the mutual will then go, right, so you've defined this carbon credit. We will now take that to our buyers. And so that market execute and deliver. And because these transactions are you know, 25 years um, is a car, you know, is a, the shortest that you can do in the carbon markets. So that the long-term transactions, the mutual then assists in the, the those farmers in marketing and executing the transaction, but then supporting that transaction over the next twenty-five years. So I hope that kind of explains what that what that engage, define, market, execute, and deliver means. Uh, thank you, uh, Rohan, for uh, answering. And um, um, we we will moving on to the uh, next question for uh, Greg from Alia. Uh, the fact that U.S. people don't really know about cooperative. Do you have any experience in incubating teams that are unfam unfamiliar with co-ops? How do they perform? Yeah, that, that's a very interesting question. Thank you for that, Alia. Um, yeah, I think there's two challenges here. So one is for the entrepreneurs and the second challenge is for uh, the customers who don't always know what a cooperative is. Um, for the entrepreneurs, we think about it that we have to teach them uh, the cooperative side. We have to explain you know, governance and how to bring in member voice and how to make sure you're really going out and, and communicating with your members uh, very well. And we also have to teach the business. And so uh, maybe, you know, so, some people in the cooperative movement just teach governance and, and you know, sort of inclusion. Uh, and, so, and, and then some people in the business world just teach business, right? And we, we need to do both really well. Um, and so we have people coming in that maybe are familiar with co-ops and they need to learn the business side. We have people that maybe know business that needs to learn the governance side. But we have to do both well. Um, but I think the other piece of your and I and I shared a link in the chat, which is our our lean co-op class, uh, which is how we think about um, solving that problem. So it's a little different than some other approaches. Um, but basically, we teach first that we want people to really identify what is the problem they're trying to solve, um, then the solution, then the business model, and then finally the ownership model. So we're actually stacking problem solution business model ownership model so the ownership model is actually uh last which is very different than some other people because we want people to start with the business model first and and we we explain that the business model is different than the ownership model the way you make different the way you make money is different than who benefits from the business um anyway so you can check out our online class if you want to take a look at it and then the other part of the problem is that um you know, there's a lot of people who are customers who don't know what cooperatives are also. So we teach our entrepreneurs that uh, 
when they when they market their business, it's not enough to just say they're a cooperative. They need to be at, at least as good as their their best competition, and that maybe being a cooperative makes it even more attractive to buy from them. But that it's not enough to say you're cooperative because even though people um, people in the U.S. like cooperatives, even if they can't uh, fully uh, say what they are, but they they have to compete on every other level, and then the cooperative is like the extra uh, bonus that makes it even better is what we tell them. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Greg. Uh, it's very interesting. And um, we have three last uh, questions. Uh, I believe this is for uh, Mr. Rohan. And uh, first of them is, um, uh, in Bahasa, so let me uh, translate it for you. Uh, in Indonesia, we have a um, tourism community uh, developed by uh, the government. Is that uh, possible to adapt a in the, um, in the uh, community, in the tourism community? And um, uh, we have the second questions. Um, how to measure every member fund so it would be fair for all? Was it there any difference between old members and new members to fund the co-op? I think uh, we can uh, answer the two questions so uh, we can show the time. Uh, please, Mr. Rohan, stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. Um, sorry, here I, don't, I can't. I don't uh, read Indonesian, so I'm not sure whether you've answered the first question for me. Um, the, in, in relation to the first question, if governments are, uh, are managing the tourism, that's highly consistent. That is very consistent with, with the Wayfarer model because what we're seeking to do is to have the, the members of the cooperative being those, those local, they could be government, um, they're most likely to be, you know, um, quasi-government at the very least, entities that are responsible for promoting tourism in their area. So um, if, there's a, if there's a tourism board that's responsible for tourism in um, um, Bali, for example, then that, that would be the member of the cooperative. Have I answered that question? In terms of the in terms of the second second question, how to measure the, the, this this talks to like a classic problem with all co-ops. Um, it's not necessarily a problem for new co-ops, but it's certainly it's a, a problem for the design of a co-op, particularly as it you know it, it scales and becomes and accumulates um, profits. And so that's this idea that uh, there's a difference between old members and new members. Um, the old members may have invested um, um, more. In, the, in creating the, the cooperative so that new members get the benefit of the old members investment. And um, it may come a time where old members want to leave the cooperative and they can look, look at and they won't go, I want some of that value. I, you know, there's the, the, the cooperatives you know, created this value when they're going, well, I helped create that, I want some of that. So that's that problem. There's this problem between old and new members and how do you manage that? Um, the way that um, this, the way that that's um, that we manage it, for example, with respect to the both the mutual, both the mutual and the cooperative, is through rebates. Um, and so, what the, a rebate is is if a member pays a fee, then you can rebate them back that fee. So, so, and what we do is we accumulate the, uh, a rebate balance over time, so that like if a member's paying, for example, ten thousand US dollars every year for for five years. After five years, they will have a rebate balance of fifty thousand US. That that if we then want to distribute um, surplus back to members, we can do it through that rebate. So that um, that's that's one way that because that the rebates are based on fees actually paid by members, it's a way that like um, uh, it, it's equal for all members. If, um, by virtue of the fact that old members will have paid more fees, so they will get more of the rebates. Um, new members will pay less fees, so they'll get less of the, the rebates. So that's the principal mechanism that um, we use for kind of um, managing the, uh, the, the surplus over time. 
so that you're distributing it to old members and new. Um, thank you, Mr. Rohan, for the uh, answer. And um, uh, it's uh, 11, uh, 11 past uh, 11.39 in uh, Wista time, which means uh, we have a little bit more uh, time for discussions. And uh, we have two last uh, questions. And uh, I'm not sure if uh, for uh, uh, one speakers, uh, but I believe we can have uh, our our um, answer for uh, this uh, question from anonymous. Uh, maybe uh, the uh, uh, people uh, who uh, give the questions will be uh, appear here. Um, the incubator and incubate in Indonesia have a, a egocentric problem, a big egocentric uh, egocentric problem. So uh, they will uh, going uh, going by themselves. Maybe. Bernice? Okay, I'm sorry, Kiki, I lost your voice. So uh, I'll answer. Uh, the question is incubator and incubator in Indonesia have the big uh, uh, in a, egocentric and polemic. So they run by uh, themselves. Well, actually, I do agree that uh, in each uh, area, they have their own characteristic, they have their own potential, they have our mentorship, uh, they have their own culture. So, well, that's okay if they run by themselves with their own characteristic. And then the question is how we increase the awareness uh, to cooperative. Uh, uh, maybe I can answer is, First, we have to formula a uh, form where uh, cooperative have beneficial uh, for them, not only in uh, social impact, but also in material. Because um, I do believe that the run cooperative way is not to suffer, right? We have to, um, uh, we have to, prosperous uh, in cooperative not to suffer on it uh, and then uh, the answer is uh, we have to switch no, uh, we have to create a formula first uh, for the incubator that uh, cooperative have uh, the best uh, form uh, for the, the uh, society that in that incubator through cooperative they are not only uh, works on the social, but also in the economics. Uh, I mean, in a uh, business uh, also. So the local government, uh, they have a willingness to, how would say, to talk to the community to support their local product, not to use a, a, a great product that uh, the money is uh, doesn't. Uh, I say, tidak berada, not in the in the local area, but they are run back to the capital city. I think there is that we will need a local willingness from the government to say that we use to we have to use our local product and do use um, a, a local brand. Uh, to to increase the to, uh, and also to support the cooperative way. That's it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, and um, we moving to uh, next questions. Uh, I believe the next questions is um, <clears throat> all. Uh, oh, everything about the way Paris 
I think web fair is getting more interesting because in Indonesia we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, tourism places. And um, uh, these three questions is for uh, Wayfarer, uh, Mr. Rohan. And um, is it possible to use Wayfarer as an existing platform to connect local co tourism in Indonesia? And um, does uh, Wayfarer organize? Um, thanks, Kiki. I think then does Wayfair organize and produce organic fertilizer? No, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's, it, it uh, participates in, I think that's kind of mixing the two ideas, but it, um, is, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a platform to help local tourism organizations reinvest in, in the local, uh, community. So it's like Airbnb, but it enables rather than those profits being taken out of the community, they're actually, they actually stay and get reinvested in the community. Um, and um, is it possible to use Wayfair as an existing platform to connect tourism in, a, in Indonesia? Um, the answer is yes, but to understand Wayfair is a, um, it's in Australia, it, it's using a, a platform which we, we're, we're um, it's using a software as a service. So it's using a platform and that could be platform could be used by uh, uh, Indonesian equivalent. So if, if there was a startup in Indonesia that wanted to be to do what Wayfarer is doing, it doesn't have to be called Wayfarer. Um, it could use the same platform, um, which that Wayfarer is using and it pays the same fees to, to use that because that is a software as a service that we're using. Um, so, so the technology is not, um, not a challenge. There are some, um, and we're really happy to share our learnings about what, how to apply this business model, how to, because um, the business model is, is really about, um, we call it community wealth building. It's really about enabling communities to, to take the local tourism dollar and reinvest it in their local community in a way that, you know, it, it, it um, you know, helps to um, create business in that local community. So, we're really happy to share our learnings. Um, and so that's why you know, we, we see that um, you know, the idea of creating a, a, a federated structure, so um, an international entity that actually um, enables this type of model to be replicated in any country around the world, I, we, we think that that would be a really useful thing because we firmly believe the model's a, a good one. Um, and in terms of the software platform, we see that um, if we were to, if there were to be, um, a number of countries creating this model, we could, in concept, build our own platform that would be cooperatively owned by all, you know, by, by all these countries. Um, and so that, that's really of interest to us. And, and so to that, you know, to that extent, we, we're thinking that if we set aside part of our earnings to enable that to happen, then, then that might be something that'd be really interesting to do to kind of promote this model globally and, um, um, you know, and, and create our own software platform that, that's cooperatively owned globally. So does that answer that question? I think it may do. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rohan, for, uh, for the answers. And uh, I think that's all the questions for, uh, for the three speakers uh, today. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, apologize for my face doesn't appear because the signal here is unstable. So um, uh, I would like to say uh, thank you uh, for the uh, for the uh, every uh, every thought and uh, every soft provocating that made made us think about the future of uh, cooperative movement in in Indonesia uh, in future and. Um, <clears throat> We will, uh, for the uh, participants, we will uh, remind you that we have still, we still have upcoming uh, events after this. And if uh, feel free if you uh, would like to join it. Um, uh, thank you for the um, for the participations and um, thank you uh, for the uh, for the everything that we discussed today and we hope that uh, we will uh, 
we see each other more in next uh, discussions. And uh, for uh, participants who want to mo know more about the the movement, the start the co-op, the incubators the co-op, and in a circle, and uh, uh, we can uh, contact them in the uh, their website. So uh, thank you for Gapatma Demeko uh, uh, Demeko uh, who uh, held the party, <laughs> the festivals uh, for uh, uh, economic democracy, and uh, we hope we will see in uh, next uh, uh, in the next event next year, and um, have a nice day, uh, everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kiki. Uh, uh, before we close the session, can we just take a photo? So please uh, open your cam, everyone. Okay. Okay, we're waiting. Please open your camera. Okay. 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 Three. Okay, okay. We still waiting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one. Cheese. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kiki. Thank you, Mbak Anis. Thank you, Rohan, Greg. Thanks, Papa. Thank you. Great. Thanks, guys. See Thank you, you so here. Much. Yeah, Thank Greg. you so much. Yeah, nice. See you, Rohan, Greg. See you, Kiki. See you, Rohan, Greg. Thank you so much.